Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another PyTorch video. In this video, I want to show you how to code a simple RNN as well as how to code a GRU or LSTM in PyTorch. So all I have here is the code for a, a fully connected neural network uh, that we coded in a previous video. Um, but I'll just recap it quickly if you haven't watched that one. So all that we have is a very, very simple fully connected net that's uh, yeah, training on the MNIST data set. So we're just loading MNIST, uh, we're initializing the network optimizer, and we have some training loop. And then in the end, we're checking the accuracy of how good our model is. So that's really all that we have. And let's, so I didn't want to repeat the code for all that. Uh, check out a previous video if you want to see more of that. Uh, in, in this video, I'll just focus on the, the RNN. So let's see, first of all, what we want to do is we want to change our hyperparameters and then we can remove this right here. We're going to create a RNN. And first thing we want to do is we want to change our hyperparameters. So when we load the MNIST data set, uh, let's see, I think when we load the MNIST data set, so the shape, when we load the MNIST data set, it's going to be 64, I mean, I guess our batch size, let's say N by one by 28 by 28 and so what we can view this as is that we have 28 uh, time sequences and each sequence has a, a 28 features okay so that's sort of how we can view the rnn working in this case and i also want to add that normally you wouldn't use an rnn for images um, but we can just we just want to kind of learn how to how to create the RNN. Um, so we can use that input size should be 28. And we can say that the sequence length is 28. So we're sort of viewing, I guess we're taking one row at a time. And that's what we're sending in to the RNN at each time step. And then we're going to have a number of layers to our RNN. Let's say we have two. And let's say we want hidden size to be... Uh, five, 256 nodes in the in the hidden and let's see the learning rate is still that and then yeah we can still have let's say number of epochs is two and that's really all that we want for high parameters uh, and we're gonna you're gonna see why we need those so let's do class rnn and then dot module and then dot module like this we're gonna have our init function and so what we're going to send in here is, first of all, the input size, uh, the hidden size, uh, the number of layers, and also the number of classes. Okay, first thing we're going to call a super RNN self um, in it. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to start with now is just a very, very basic RNN, and then we'll take it to the GRU and then an LSTM. First thing we're going to do is self dot hidden size uh, is going to be hidden size and self dot num layers is just going to be num layers and then we're going to define uh, self dot rnn which will be nn dot rnn and it's going to be so the input size is going to be input size uh, and that's sort of right the number of uh, number of features for each time step okay so we don't have to explicitly say how many sequences we want to have the rnn will just work for any number of sequences that we send in just in this case it will be 28 sequences and then we're going to do hidden size that's the number of nodes in each time step and lastly the number of layers for the rnn and one addi additional argument that we're going to do is batch first equals true um, yeah, so uh, since we, the data set that we load, the MNIST data set is going to have the batches as the, ex as the first axis, then we need to say batch first equals true. Um, yeah, you can read more about in, in the, to, like, uh, PyTorch documentation for how they expect the input to be. Uh, but if we write batch first equals true, as we do in this case, we're going to have, uh, so we need, the input needs to be the number of batch, the batch size first 
and then we're gonna have time sequence and then it's gonna be time times features okay so that's just what we're gonna uh, send in in this case and then let's see so we're gonna also have a fully connected at the end so we're gonna do nn dot linear and uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the hidden size and we're gonna do times sequence length and then number of classes so here what I as I said we have 28 time uh, time sequences right time steps and what we're gonna do is we're gonna concatenate all of those sequences and that's what we're gonna send into the linear layer so it's gonna use information for from every uh, hidden state you could also just take the last the absolute last hidden state uh, and I'm gonna show you in the end of this video how to do that that as well uh, but let's just start with this one uh, and uh, so now we're done with the initialization that's the RNN that's the linear and then we're gonna do the define forward self comma X and we need to sort of initialize the hidden state first so we're gonna do hidden state I guess we can do h0 h torch dot torch dot zeros and then self dot num layers and uh, yeah so the hidden state here needs to be initialized as the number of layers first and then x dot size um, zero so that's sort of how many mini bashes we send in at the same time and then self dot hidden size and then we're just going to uh, do dot to device and then so we're going to do forward um, uh, forward for prop so forward prop uh, we're going to do uh, self dot rnn and we're just going to send in x and the hidden state and then we're just going to do out and then what would what would be the output here is just the hidden state uh, but since we're not going to store the hidden state um, since every example has its own hidden state we're just going to ignore that that output and then what we're going to do is we're going to do out out that reshape and then we're going to keep keep the batch as the first axis and then we're just going to concatenate everything else so what this would be is uh, i guess 28 times uh, so the sequence length right 28 times the hidden size which is uh, 256 and then we're just going to do out equals self dot fc of out right so we just pass it through the linear layer and then return out and I think that should be it let's see we need to do RNN here and we need to send in all of these things so let's just change to this so we send in the input size the hidden size number of layers and number of classes okay and we we define those here in the hyperparameters the rest of the code should not change so uh, we should be able to run this now and uh, we do not so let's see what's wrong uh, input must have three dimensions got two yeah so um yeah i know what what's wrong here as i said the mnist data set has one by 28 by 28 uh, but the rnn expects uh, uh this kind of shape so n times 28 by 28 so what we got to do is um we got to do dot squeeze and then one so this will remove the the one uh, for that particular axis so that's axis one and we're gonna just remove that one and uh, yeah, hopefully it should work now yeah all right yeah so we also have to let's see here we, we can't have this uh, this is from the previous fully connected um, so that needs to be removed and I don't think there should be anything else now so I'm gonna let it train and I'll uh, get back to you when it's done all right so it's done training and we get about so we get 97.5 percent accuracy on the the training and 97.28 on the test set which is actually quite good right we just trained it for two epochs and uh, and it's just a basic basic RNN uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that we need to do the same thing here uh, dot squeeze of one when we do the check accuracy but yeah that's just a, a detail so now let's see if we can improve on this result uh, by 
changing this to a GRU instead. So what we can do is we can do nn.gru uh, instead of just a basic rnn. And yeah, we, we really don't have to change anything else except that. So we can just change self.gru instead. And uh, that should be all we have to change. So I'll run, rerun this and we'll see what we get. So after letting it train, uh, we get, so we kind of see here that we got a little bit of an uh, improvement. We got 98.41 on the training and 98.10 on the test set. Now let's change this to an LSTM instead. And what we need to do then is we need to do nn.lstm. And uh, yeah, let's do self.lstm. And now what we need to do is we need to actually have a separate uh, a separate cell state. So we're going to torch dot zeros uh, self dot num layers. Because um, if you remember, the LSTM sort of has a hidden state and a cell state. That's not the case for a GRU or basic RNN. But for an LSTM, we need to define a separate one. So it's kind of the same as the hidden state. And what we're going to do is we're going to send in self dot LSTM. We're going to send in h0 comma C0, so the cell hidden state and the cell state um, f uh, as a tuple in the second argument. And th th that's really all we need to change. So I'm going to rerun this again, see what we get. All right, so uh, we get comparatively this similar results as the GRU. In this case, the GRU is actually outperforming the LSTM. And uh, yeah, I guess in practice, you m most commonly see the LSTM performing better, uh, but really they are comparable and uh, and uh, yeah, there, there's really no, none of them that are better than the other, but I think using an LSTM is a good default choice. But let's see um, what we want to do now. Yeah, so I, I said that now we're kind of using information from every hidden state. Uh, but perhaps sort of just using the last hidden state is is uh, is okay, right? Because the last hidden state has information from all of the previous ones. Um, so what we can do for that uh, is that we can just remove the, uh, the nn dot for every. So it doesn't. We don't need to do this uh, concatenation of all of the hidden state. And so we're just taking the last one. And uh, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna remove this reshape. And we're going to do, so out here is going to take all mini batch or all training examples at the same time. And then it's just going to take the last hidden state and then it's going to take all features. Okay. So that's really all we need to change uh, just for it to take a specific hidden state. In this case, the last one, uh, of course, I, I like just thinking about it, we're losing information by doing this. So the result is probably going to be worse. Uh, but perhaps in a few cases, like uh, just taking the most relevant information and training longer on that one uh, is better than taking uh, all information. So let's see what we get. All right, it seems that I lied. I'm not really sure how it's um, becoming better, but it, it seems that the uh, it's performing better now. Uh, when just using the last hidden state. I really just think that's a matter of training longer. Um, but yeah, that doesn't really matter that much. So that's, that's anyways, that's how you would use just the last hidden state. And uh, yeah, that's all for RNN and GRUs and LSTMs. In the next video, I'll show how to do a, a bidirectional LSTM. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to see you in the next video.